This time on Don't Evolve Me. We have no plan whatsoever what we're doing this episode. I got, wait, tell me how, how are you going, how are you introducing yourself? Uh, we'll, we'll just go with Brandon. Brandon. We got Brandon here. <laughs> yeah. He's here. We were going to do something. We don't know what we're going to do. We're going to figure it out. It is the figure it out episode. The wing it. The wing it episode. I like that one better. The wing it episode. It's going to be good. We, we always have good conversations that get, dive deep, and then we never record it. We already had like an hour conversation before this. Yep. Because we were trying to figure out what to come up with us, so we're just going to wing it. Yep. Yeah, we're just going to send whatever whatever flies our way. Exactly. So welcome to the wing it episode. Do you want to say the words, or should I say the words? You got it. You got it. All right. It's your show. Let's cue the music. All right, welcome to Don't Evolve Me, the place like Ash, Ketch, and Pikachu. We don't evolve, we just level up. Welcome to the Winged episode. It's been decided, we're calling it the Winged episode. We have an idea, but we have nothing written down. Please welcome Brandon Klein. Hello. Thank you. Thank I need you. like an applause or a studio. Yeah, we might be moving board. studio, or a soundboard too. Mm. That involves money. We might be changing studios too, we were talking about that. Yeah, yeah, I think that would be pretty cool. It'd, especially for setting up cool. like for recording. Yeah, video. a cool space where we can do, like it'd be video. Except I gotta move the wall back out there though too. Yeah, it'd be worth it. I think, especially if you got like a couch or something like that. I think that'd be really cool. I'm just worried about people robbing the place. Yeah, locks. We, yeah, we put an alarm on it. Oh yeah, it also costs money. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> everything costs money. Welcome to the winging episode, and we're gonna start it off with normal. Brandon, oh, let's show me your wares. Brandon, you got no wares. No wares. No wares. Pretty, Just pretty naked. basic. Yeah. Actually, it's pretty basic. I'm like, I, I remember seeing your shirt. I'm like, I think I have that shirt. I think this I have a design like your shirt. This shirt? Yeah. I like this shirt. It is nice. It's kind of chilly out today, so I figured I'd bust out the long sleeve. I don't know if it's long sleeves. I run hot, though. I'm always cold. I'm always hot. Yeah. Um, My daughter's like me, too. Like, we're um, at her daycare. Kids are sick. Mm-hmm. And so I was feeling her head. I'm like, she feels a little warm. <laughs> My wife's like, she's always warm. She's you. She's always warm. <laughs> so like, oh. A furnace. That's fair. She is. Mm-hmm. I remember, like, back when she was, like, cuddling. Mm-hmm. If you if you ever, like, have kids or anyone listening, if you have, like, if you're not a parent yet, when you become a parent, really, really um, enjoy the baby cuddles early on. It don't last long. It really doesn't. Because once they start crawling and start moving, at least, like, I know it changes for kid to kid because the personalities are different. My kid, at least, is just like, I want, I don't want to cuddle. I want nothing to do with yeah, you. Yeah, as soon as she's able to move on her own, she's on her own. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, now as she's in this, like, gray area where she's just like, I want, I don't want to cuddle with you, but I want you to hold me. Mm. But as soon as you hold me, I want everything around. So mm. I want to leave you. But if you leave me, I'm going to cry until you pick me up again. Yep, yep. Wants everything. Her cake and she wants to eat it too. Exactly. But yeah, I just remember like cuddling with her and falling asleep and then waking up and like I'm sweating. Like I'm sweaty. She's full of sweat. <laughs> like this is just gross. A fireball, yeah. She is like a little fireball. I'm a fireball. She's a fireball. Anyway. Or sapphire. <laughs> <laughs> and she usually run, sapphire usually runs cold. Yeah. Well that's, that's good. Know. That's a good combination then at least. All right. So I don't have much wears. I have my Pokemon trainer hat. I have a pink shirt on. I've worn this outfit before. Real Madden rock pink. I agree. It's yeah. one of my favorite colors. It is. It's a nice color. Yeah, I like bright colors. That would explain your color choices with a certain project I don't think you want to talk about yet. Yeah, we can talk about that later. Okay. I'm interested. I yeah. saw the designs. I'm, I want. I can't wait till it's in full scope. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But well, moving on because there's a little bit of mystique in mystery yeah we'll leave that up for, up for right, what have you been nerding out on nerding out on i have been playing the pokemon tcg for the last like two weeks oh, pretty much yeah. non-stop uh it's it i have a big i played a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh. i played a lot of magic this is my first real endeavor into pokemon and it's a really refreshing change of pace it compared is. to the other games it's kind of nice yeah there's no it's a it's a much slower paced game mm-hmm. just in comparatively because 
there's no chance to lose on the first turn like there is in the other two yeah, games. Yeah, like where you, you, the person, like the, your opponent, can have like a really good turn and then boom, they're just win. You're, you're, yeah, it's a win for you. There's nothing yeah. you can do. Whereas in Pokemon, like since the way that you win is by getting prize cards by drawing all your prize cards, yep. and you can only really like best case scenario you get like three maybe in a turn. Yeah, that's the have team six cards, right? Nope. Uh, so at the beginning of the game, you draw your hand, and then you put six cards from the top of your deck in yeah. a face-down pile. Yeah. And every time you knock out one of your opponent's Pokemon, you get to draw one of those cards. Yep. And then once you draw all of them, you win. That's yeah. how you win the game. Yeah. But there's one card. There's like a team-up card where uh, if you beat the team-up card, it's super powerful. But if you beat it, you get three. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah, then, there's, there's, there's a few. They've done quite a few different, like... Uh, Variations of like special versions of Pokemon. Yeah, like v, there's v, e, Max yeah, or v, v Maxes. Those are in right now, and EXs. They've also had GXs, which aren't in right now in standard. Uh, tag Team is not in standard right now. Oh, yeah. I think I was thinking Tag Team yeah. was the three one. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, tag Team GXs. Those were big. Those are all three ones. Fuck standard. Yeah. Uh, I don't yeah. have money for standard. Well, actually, I'll be honest. Pokemon is by far the cheapest of the three TCGs. You could oh, build, probably. you could build like a top meta deck for like 40 bucks. And be like ready to go to a tournament. Nice. That's yeah, cool. it's like actually super affordable. I really like when like uh, when those companies do that. Yeah. No, it, it's it's weird because they did the thing that both. Of, well, Yu Gi Oh is is decent at it. They're not as good, but they're a no. lot better than Magic as far as just like you have these base versions of almost in Pokemon of pretty much every card. There's just a base version that's not holographic, it's not rare, whatever, yeah. and those are usually really cheap. And yeah. then there's like their full art foil rainbow foil versions and those can be really expensive yeah and that's cool because that gives people that want to like trick out their decks or spend a lot of money they have the options and those chases yep. but for the people that just want to play the game they don't have to spend such a big investment in or order the, to be at that top or level. the collectors who just want money and then yeah they have that market the, yeah buy out the entire store that do it yeah there's uh in pokemon there's also a very interesting thing uh as far as value uh they call it the waifu tax okay which is kind of a thing um in Yu-Gi-Oh, it's kind of a thing on some cards that are uh, like anime waifus. They kind of just have a higher price tag than they probably should. Yeah. Uh, just because they're like people like them for their collections, you know, nerds and, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but in Pokemon, it seems to be even more strong because they have uh, full art supporters. And a lot of them are, you know, like female waifu f Pokemon trainers and stuff yeah. like that. And those cards... Uh, astronomically more expensive than all yeah. the other cards in the game, like by far. Even even comparatively to like the male full art ones or whatever that are arguably just as good in some scenarios, like of mm -hmm. supporters. Yeah. Just because the ones are like the female waifus, they're so much more expensive because so many people just collect those cards. Yeah. I'll be honest, I kind of want to start a collection of all the waifu stuff, but. That's a ways I down think the road. I have a few of those cards. It's it's not as expensive as it could be. I think at the top end, some of them are a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, but compared to like Yu Gi Oh and Magic on some of those collections, well, I, I always like it. Thousands. Like some of the sets that they have there. Uh, like there's always like a couple cards that are like a few hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Like if you pull it, like I remember Rainbow V Max Charizard. Yep, yep, that was a recent one. Yeah, that's like major one. Mm -hmm. I pulled a full art Arceus. Oh, nice, nice. Uh, like V Max one that was like that, eighty yeah. bucks. So that's a really good card right now in standard. I know it's in my deck. Yeah, I have two of them. <laughs> yeah, that, I have one of the, the best. I have the regular art and the alt art. Oh, nice, nice. So I have both of them. Okay, okay. On top of a Galarian Zapdos. Okay, okay. Well, yeah, Malari uh, Galarian Zapdos. Right, that's what yeah. I said. Yeah. Is what? What type is that? Uh, fighting flying. Okay, fighting. Yeah, it's interesting. It is. It, uh, it gives you some interesting weakness. It shouldn't be a Zapdos because it doesn't make sense. Like the Articuno, Zapdos, Moltres. Mm -hmm. it, like it, their names resemble their typing. Yeah, but there's the Galarian versions. Right, but Articuno isn't Arctic. No, actually, Articuno doesn't make sense in the world of Pokemon because there's no Arctic. Yeah, there's not really an ice type, although it's kind of like it's like a subtype off of water, but it's not really its own thing. No, but what it, it should be. What I'm getting at is like the name of Galarian art, like Articuno, like it should just be a whole new mon. Yeah, just like the Galarian legendary birds are very similar to it, but they're not like you know you have Psychic Uno or something. Yeah, and then you have Fighting Dose. And Dark Trace, Dark Trace sounds nice. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, I, you know, you know what? 
I never realized there was Uno Dos Race in the you, three. You <laughs> just realized you that. One hundred percent just made me realize that. I never Here's, noticed. I am that nowadays before. old. Yeah. <laughs> when I realized that it was Uno Dos Race, I never time. never noticed that. Huh. Wow, good for Pokemon. Yeah. Still surprising me after thirty years. Well, you know about like Ekans and Arbok, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah what yeah. about Muck? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone knows about Muck. Okay. So uh, I caught a perfect Grimer on my um, Pokemon Go. Okay. And I named him Muckerp. Muckerp? <laughs> <laughs> I had to think about it for half a second. <laughs> you're, I wish we had a camera on your face because yeah. your, your reaction I was, was trying priceless. to picture, I was picturing the reverse letters. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Works, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I really want to do like the nicknames like for uh, Pokemon Go because I, I feel like I have a few good ones. Okay. Do you do you do nicknames when you play Pokemon games? Uh, no, I usually just do the name of the Pokemon. Yeah, I know. I'm I've been doing not it with creative Pokemon or smart Go, enough. But that's because like I have nearly three grand in Pokemon that I have on my mm. account. We can do that later. I don't know. We don't have a plan. Yeah. I we have we have an idea. We don't have a script. So, uh, nerding out. We were, I was talking Breaking Bad. We're almost done with it. Uh, we finished. We have three episodes left. So we have oh, you're real close. Oh yeah. Uh, Oz to get that time Mandius, and then we have the finale, mm. the Felina, and then the one everyone that was before it. Yeah. So nerding out on that. That shows. That shows writing so good. Holds up. It holds up so well. So my question for you is: Is it the greatest television show in our in the 21st century? My question for you is: What would you consider to be better? What would be the competition? Well, so there was this talk too. So The Wire and Sopranos are always up there. Have you watched either of them all the no, way through? No, I haven't. So there's those two shows. I feel like that that right there just says it that they're not as good because I haven't seen them. <laughs> because you haven't seen yep. them. Yeah, they're good. I, I've I've seen I've seen a lot. And then there's a Succession recently. Yeah. I feel like it's still too new. It's up there. Yeah, it's in the I, I'm conversation. Sure it's really good. Wait, wait till wait. You gotta wait till it finishes. Someone else I, put think, Mad Men in the conversation too. I, I've seen most. I never watched the last season of Mad Men. I did really enjoy that show, and it's a show I'd like to go back to. I want to go back to it. As well. I like jo, uh, John Hamm quite a bit. He's pretty good. Um, Is that his real name? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It'd be very Don Draper of him if it wasn't. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um. Oh, I, I think the the reason why Breaking Bad is so good and holds up is because it's such a complete story from start to end. Yeah. And it has such a good ending, which is where so many shows fall flat. Interesting. So uh, in the Succession podcast, they're trying to figure out where Succession was ranking. And they, they a lot of them threw away Breaking Bad, and they said the ending wasn't as good. Breaking Bad has the best ending. I, it, it's, a, it's a little bittersweet. Yeah, but it's the most fitting. It's the only way it could have ended. It ended the way it should have it, ended. No, I it, remember watching the finale because I actually caught up to the show, mm, like me too. right where I'm, right where I'm at now. Yep, watched the last couple episodes. As they I caught up until Osmondius, and that's when I was like, I, I couldn't wait to watch it on TV. I'm like, fuck, mm. I hate watch, I hate waiting, yep, hate waiting. Yep. And then I had to wait for the finale, and uh, I remember watching the finale and just being like, this is as good as. Like this is exactly nothing, what I, yeah nothing, nothing gonna surprised be better me, but yeah. I'm like this is. I was almost disappointed because like it gave me what I expected. Yeah, but I'm also like what I expected greatness, and they delivered gave, greatness. They delivered greatness. It he, just wasn't surprising. Yeah, you got you got the the redemption that yeah. is a redemption that maybe he didn't deserve, but like he needed. Yeah, and then you know he got. His just desserts that he did deserve in the end. He did die, but he didn't face punishment, which is what a lot of people. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Know. I, a death is punishment to me, in a sense. I mean, yeah. If he died, yeah. I, I yeah. If I he guess died. I don't know. Do they talk about him in El Camino? I never seen that movie. Uh oh, you should see it. It's yeah. not. I wouldn't say. I would say out of the three projects, it's definitely last. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to say, like, it's not because of the fact that, like, Better Call Saul is a show, Breaking Bad is a show. Yeah, this is just a this short movie. This is like a Netflix movie. Yeah. Where the actors are very much aged out of the role. Yeah. Got Jesse Plemons. 
yeah. <laughs> he gains gained. So, he gains so much weight, which is fine. Like he's it's fine. It's just yeah, when yeah. He, you go back to play talk, like he looks way too old. Oh yeah, I mean especially if you're like watching the show and then you immediately watch and then El Camino Paul, afterwards. Yeah, and they do flashbacks after, and Aaron Paul just looks old. Yeah, it's, oh yeah. Um, it's a little jarring, mm-hmm. but I'm I'm glad that they told the story. It's not good. Yeah, or no, it's just, not. It's not okay. great. If 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 there was. If there was something that Breaking Bad was missing, it was some sort of better resolution for Jesse. Yeah, and that's what they delivered. Yeah, so they, they delivered a resolution. That's good. So, and then that, that was the one thing. I mean, he got saved, but he didn't. Have it, you, it ends with him just driving. Did you watch all Better Call Saul? I haven't seen the last like season. Ooh, okay, I can't ask you this question. Yeah, because the the question is which which is a better show? Yeah, and I've, I've, I've heard some debate, but I think Better Call Saul is a better show. In terms of like writing, in terms of, so in terms of like, it's weird because like it's a better show, but Breaking Bad is a better premise. Yeah, I mean Breaking Bad is such a uh, every man like can see themselves being in Walter Wal- White. Yeah, every man in the in like a dark fantasy kind of thing. In that desperation, they feel like okay. When I first they want it. to feel like they could do what had to be done in a sense to you know. Yeah to provide for themselves it was kind of yeah it was definitely a dark fantasy like power game yeah show and whereas better like, call saul like it's harder to it's relate slow, to saul as a, a person s- yeah. like he's a great character i love uh bob odenkirk and yeah. he's one of my favorite actors by far and it's I love a the slow show, but... burn character study of yeah and, characters. and and there's so much like lawyer stuff and stuff in it too yeah which I could see that being a turnoff. Uh, some of that, I mean, I find some of it's very interesting. It is and the legal stuff and whatnot, especially when it comes to like the loopholes and things, you know, like dancing mm. around the law. But at the same time, some of it is like, you know, a lot of like courtroom scenes or like executive office scenes mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And it can be really like hard to relate because it's, you know, people can't be like, ah, oh, yeah, I've that's my everyday life. You yeah. know, I'm dealing with the head honcho lawyers and my I, crazy brother who's. I really like the show because for the fact that like it 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 starts out slow because we were talking Game of Thrones earlier today has one of the best beginnings of any show ever. Better Call Saul, yeah, by far the the first case that he takes mm-hmm. as a public defender defending those kids. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's <laughs> so funny, it's so messed I up. Got, I want to rewatch it because I'm watching um, Breaking do, Bad. Do you remember what I'm talking about? No, I don't. It's the the very long. the very first I the very it first case. It, it's some kids that broke into a morgue oh. and cut the head off of a cadaver. Yeah, and then proceeded to do things to it. And he's trying to defend them. And then it turns out they recorded all of it on video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's that's how the that show. Case? No, I don't think so. I don't. I don't believe so. But that's literally how it starts with yeah. that court case. I, I remember vividly. I will say, like Breaking Bad. Here's the argument that I have for Breaking Bad being the best show in the 21st century. Again, we did no plan in this episode. We don't know where this is going in this whole episode. Winging it, just talking about whatever comes to mind. You, two ADHD people talking about whatever goes to mind. Oh yeah, we can go on any tangent. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> right now it's Breaking Bad because that's yeah. what I've been watching. Um, the reason why I think it's one of the best shows because it's it's one of the best shows because. As you say, every man can go. It has such a casual appeal to it, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it, not just in a casual appeal. It has a casual appeal that keeps you going. It is one mm-hmm. of those great shows that just you watch it and you keep going. You got to see how it ends. You yeah, it has so much intrigue. You're like, yeah. where does this go? It mm-hmm. leaves you wanting more mm-hmm. and more and more and more. And even when the show ends, you want more. Which is better call Saul. Which you get better call Saul or El Camino. Mm. I don't know if they're doing another a fourth project. I really fucking hope they do. Yeah, I I'm in. Like that universe is so interesting. Vince yeah. Gilligan. Yeah, just, I, w- I would love uh, uh, another story made in the same universe with all new characters, like yeah. a whole new premise. Maybe have like a cameo here or there, mm-hmm. you know, just to kind of pull together, make something it feel like it's sense. in the same world. But yeah, absolutely, and make it and, and something totally different. Not necessarily. It could be about crime and stuff like that still, yeah. obviously, because I feel like that is kind of like the setting they're in is that, you know, the crime, crime yeah. legal type thing. But, it, you know, maybe not about the meth business or, you know, maybe like it's the like legal side. But Jacking cars. Yeah. Stripping them down for parts. Yeah. Or even, you know, something 
darker, you know, maybe like oh. a hitman or something like or that. Or just the business side of it uh, that deals with the ideas of capitalism. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It could be like, very interesting, like the cutthroat, you know, even uh, incorporating those, you know, illegal tactics and stuff like that into, like, corporate world, mm-hmm. you know. Could be good. It would I, be good. I, I, I would like sign off Vince Gilligan. On it. Yeah, I would, I would give it a shot. I know he's starting a uh, different show, and uh, Kim, uh, the actress who plays Kim, uh, I forget, Seahorn? I forget her first name. I'm not sure. Uh, she's she's going to be in it. And it's weird. I'm not as interested because it's on CBS. CBS, yeah. I think it's on CBS. I could be wrong. Name one good show that's come out on CBS. Go. Name one show that came from... Well, yeah. I was going to name one show that comes from, like, Straight up network shows like Smallville, Supernatural. Uh, yeah, I was thinking Parks and Rec. Yeah, Parks and Rec. Brooklyn Nine Nine. Was Community? Did that 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 started to see NBC? NBC. Yeah. yeah. So that was on network television. Yeah, but, but, CBS. but, but what does CBS got? CSI. There, there's a CSI channel, right? <laughs> that's just <laughs> I, I don't know. that's just like all CSI shows. Isn't all Law and Order, like Law and Order. ABC? Is that oh, is that ABC? Yeah, I don't. Even, I, don't, I, don't I watch confuse it. Yeah, I don't. Mean, I don't watch I TV bored. in general. That's for casuals. Yeah, yeah. I don't get. I don't watch regular TV in general. It's for the older folk. Yeah, yeah. My grandma watches a lot of cable. Yeah, older folk. I feel yeah. like stick with cable. We're just like, yeah, we're going to YouTube now. Yeah, that that's the other thing. Yeah, it's it's cable or YouTube that is, is interesting because like my my uncle, he'll get on YouTube and watch a lot of stuff on oh, there yeah. too. I feel like everyone's kind of starting the. Get on the YouTube train. Mm. My dad will sit up and straight up watch TikTok videos. Yeah, I don't. I don't like TikTok. I just got. Do you, do you have TikTok on your phone? Yeah. I'm disappointed. I gotta build the brand, man. Nah, you don't gotta. You don't gotta. That's uh, that's a whole sphere you ain't gotta touch. That's that's like that's where a lot of people are coming from. It's, yeah. So it's one of those. Uh, yeah, but how many good people are coming from TikTok? It's like. I, like, can, I can think of like one a guy that uh, there's a lot did of, magic stuff. There's a lot of people who are coming from TikTok. Yeah, there's a lot, but it's like saying I'm gonna make a show and I'm not gonna post it on YouTube. No, I don't think so. I disagree with that statement. I don't think you gotta touch TikTok. You gotta do shorts though. I think shorts are good, yeah, but shorts are on YouTube. You do, they are on YouTube now. Which yeah, I guess it's a, it's taken off more and more. Yeah, I gotta put I gotta put a lot of the videos I did on TikTok on there. Yeah. So, uh, ooh, speaking of nerding out, that's another thing I've been nerding out on. It's Pokemon filters. Pokemon filters? Yeah. So you basically to filter your faces in the middle, and then they have like a random six. And each generation, they they made one for each generation. So they'll you have to pick one out of the six. Mm-hmm. And the way I play it, I play it as you have one reroll. Okay. One reroll, just because it, it put more strategy to it. So you get one reroll, and then it does like a simulation through whatever gems of um, that generation. So I don't have Gen 1, but there's Gen 2, and you have to play all 16 gems. Okay. Um, And then there's like Gen 3, you get ribbons in the contest. And so, yeah. Okay. um, To explain it better than that is it randomizes 6, and then you pick your 1. So you, obviously you want fully evolved Pokemon and you want legendaries if there's a legendary. Right. My strategy for it is if there's a legendary, pick it. Okay. Even if it's a double typing. But outside of that, pick the best Mon plus try to spit out your typing. Right. What, and what? where do you play this? TikTok. And, oh, okay. The TikTok filter. Okay. But I'm sure there's like other filters too on like yeah, other yeah. places. I just haven't found them yet. Yeah. I just found them all on TikTok. Okay. Or blind ranking. Okay. So I thought maybe you were playing like an actual game. No, well, it <laughs> technically is a game. It's more like technically fun. rock paper scissors is a game too. It is. Do you want to play? <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. I always do scissors. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that seems like until you figure out getting, that I, yeah. until you figure out that I always do scissors, then I do paper. No, nah, that's just that's just head games right there. You say you say you're gonna throw. So what is that in? Uh... Were you there when I played Brian in paper rock scissors? Maybe. Because I played in Paper, Rock, Scissors 10 times, and I went 10 and 0. (laughs) To a point where I started getting cocky and told him I was reading his mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, you won't do it this time. And then I did. (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, or uh, remember Jimmy? I once beat him in uh, Connect Four 14 times in a row. What? How do you lose in Connect Four 14 times in a row? Jimmy? I don't know. <laughs> he didn't, it wasn't like a tie that's, or anything. That's, yeah, that's basically like slightly more complicated than Tic Tac Toe. Tic Tac Toe at least like has like a strategy, whereas if there's, you know how to play Tic Tac Toe, strategy. If you know how to play Tic Tac Toe, it's a tie every time. Yeah, if you know how to play it, it is a tie. Yeah, but if you play with somebody who doesn't know strategy, it's a win. Yeah. I've had people argue with me before on this, and like there's no strategy in Tic Tac Toe. I'm like, all right, watch. And every time I went first, I won. And every time they went first, I tied. There's yeah, there's yeah, there's a strategy in that. The strategy is to tie. Yeah. <laughs> because like if you, you can't have two people who are really good at tic tac toe or know the strategies because there's only like a couple strategies to go. Yeah, and whoever goes first, as long as the other person knows it, it's pretty easy. If to you go first, go corner. Go corner. Go corner. If you're second, you always go middle. Yep, yep. You got to block off all those. And options. then uh, it really doesn't matter where you kind of go for the next one. You can either go across or you can go in this. Like you can go corner again. However, usually you do across. Mm. So if they go middle, then you go across. The second person, you just do a side one, and boom, it's tied. Yep, yep. That's, and then that's, they, that's the yeah. defense. And then, yeah, and then they have to you block you. go middle, you. then you go side. And then they block you, and then you block them, and then yeah, it's a, it's a tie. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, if you are going first, you go corner. Most people pick middle, but if they go corner, you just pick any other of the corners, and then you win. Because mm. they have, then they have to block you. And yeah, you're. You you're can set run. yourself up, yeah, for a double, double blockage. Exactly. All right. So, the writer strike. Writer strike. Well, let's get into the news first. Okay. I mean, it's kind of the news. We got. Well, it is the news. Okay. What other news you got for us? It's time for a news quickie. Oh yeah. Superman Legacy. Oh, yes. Did you hear about the actors, all the actors that are in it, all the characters? Uh, I've seen, I saw who got cast as Superman. And yep. uh, no one knows who this guy is. Yeah. I had uh, Eric McConnell on. Um, you won't know him. He, d- he used to do YouTube uh, reviews, movie reviews. Now okay. he does, he just writes them on his website. Okay. So he reviews movies, and I asked him, and it was like a big question. I'm like, who is this dude? Mm-hmm. And he's like, I don't know. I don't know who he is. And I'm like, okay, the movie person that I know, the, like, the guy who's really in the movies, doesn't know who he is. He looks the part, though. He looks yeah. like a younger Henry Cavill. Yeah. No, I think it'll be okay. Um, I trust James, James Gunn. Yeah. Uh, that's. I mean, honestly, we're not going to know until that movie comes out. No. Which might not be until, like, 2026. Yeah, 2025, if everything goes well. 2025, 20, yeah, 2025 if the strike ends like tomorrow. Well, it ends by this fall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if it goes further than that, which is kind of looking like this. Yeah, I think so. We'll, but we'll, we'll get into it. All right, so did you hear who was cast as Guy Gardner? No. Guy Gardner is in the film. I, I saw that a bunch of people got uh, cast, but I yep. didn't look and see who it was. Or like uh, what you'll know this character, or you'll know this actor, Nathan Fillion. Oh, really? Interesting. As Guy Gardner. So so DC got him before Marvel, huh? Well, because they've been talking about him for a while in a bunch well, of different in, roles. He's in all the Guardians films in all the different films. Like, yeah, I guess that's true. That's true. I but he doesn't really have like he's not like as a main. Didn't get like his own hero role. No. Which I feel like he definitely no. Deserved. Um, in the first Guardians, he was a CGI character. Yeah. Same. In the second one, I. He was like in the background somewhere. He was like a background character. And the third one, he was like a prominent security guard. Yeah, but still. In a flesh suit. Yeah. <laughs> Did you watch that movie yet? I have not seen the third one yet. You should go see it. They're, they're... It's online now. I'll probably watch it eventually. I will confirm or con- deny. What? That it's online. No, it is online. It will be on Disney Plus in August. No, no, I'll tell you right now. It, it is online. You can You can download it. I know. For for different ways. I know. Yeah, I'm open about <laughs> that. I I am. I'm for, open. I uh, yeah. I'm open, just not on here. Oh, I'm loud and proud. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving forward. So yeah, he's cast as Guy Gardner, which I thought was surprising because he looks like Hal Jordan. 
Yeah. And I'm like, if out of because he's older, Nathan Billings older. I'm like, out of all the Green Lanterns, I expected him to be. I expected him to be Hal Jordan. Yeah, like an older Hal Jordan. I do think it's smarter for them to get a bunch of less known actors that they can sign for a while and try to do more of what Marvel did yeah, with all their people than trying to get all these big name people that are yeah. really feast or famine on whether no, they're I, doing I well. I 100% agree. I'm, that's why I like the whole Superman casting. I'm like, I don't know who he is. I'm okay with that. Yeah. So like having Nathan Fillion play Guy Gardner as like an important character, you know, yeah. in the story, but also not like a main character, like somebody that he can actually like really sink well, his teeth like into. Michael Douglas as Hank Pym. Yeah. Where he was uh, very much a character who, you know, he's he, he's a character that everyone loves or loves to hate, I would should, should, yeah. should say, with Hank, man. Um, but he's past his prime, so he's still in the story, but, like, the younger version, the legacy character takes over. Yeah. So I'm, like, thinking, like, when Nathan Fillion comes across as a Hal Jordan, and I'm like, Hal Jordan is the first Green Lantern from Earth. Mm-hmm. Well, at least canonically so where's Greg Gardner from is he not human he is he, there's does he like get, does he get picked after Hal yeah. Jordan oh okay he's okay. like the third no fourth I didn't realize they picked so many people from Earth yeah <laughs> there's like six now yeah it's kind of ridiculous Guy Gardner has been around for a long time yep he's like one of the OGs uh, he's either third or fourth because it was um Number two was John Stewart. John no. Stewart came up before Guy Gardner. I don't think Wait, so. Is it John Stewart? That's that is the name of a Green Lantern, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's confu- it, I always think that too because there is a John Stewart. In real life, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. wait a second, is that yeah. right? Yeah. But I'm also like, John Stewart is such a like very common name. Though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just two first names. Um, they, it wrong. just made me think, like, wait, is it John Stewart? That, yeah, I'm, my brain, everything's yeah. confirming yes. Yeah. It but I'm still weird. like, yeah. Then it was Kyle Ratner, I believe. Yeah. Well, I also think there's That's a human still, name. He's still pretty new. Is he? Yeah, he's Is, is he new. four then? Is it Guy Gardner? Is Guy Gardner's got to be before Kyle. I feel like Kyle, because uh, that's like in the last few years. No, well, it was 2000s. 21st century. He's not that new. Isn't, is there another new one? Am I, because is, is, uh, is Kyle, is there's, the, there's two. Isn't, isn't there. There's two new ones now, because they like did the whole. They had like two Green Lantern comics come out at the same time during Rebirth. Yeah, because I feel one like. One was Hal Jordan, and that was like Hal Jordan taking over uh, the Green Lantern Corps and kind of taking over, taking the galaxy back from Sinestro. Okay. And that was actually a really good comic book series. And then there was like the Earth Green Lanterns, and there was like Jesse. I want to say Jesse Bates, but I don't think that's right. There was, there was like two of them, and one's like a. It was like a Latina girl. And I forget what the dude was, like who he was. I never read the comic. Okay. So there's a lot of Green Lanterns. But okay. that's how comics works now. They have a lot of legacy characters. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. Nathan, Nathan Fillion, to... uh, Gary Gardner. I forget who they casted as Hawk Girl, but Hawk Girl's in it. Okay. She's relatively new. She's like 21, Hawk Girl. I'm like, mm. perfect, cool. You know, to, to me, Hawk Girl being added, it's like, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, no, I'm not like excited for it. Um, Guy Gardner, I'm excited just because it's his first time. And Nathan Fillion, Nathan Fillion, yeah, he's, he's great. A, he's great. He's like you put you put him in the superhero role. I'm happy. Yeah, I, yeah, I feel like he really I hasn't had his the chance Gardner, to shine. But I think he can do I think it. I think he he can play a good goofy kind of funny guy. I think I, I think, think he'll so. fit the role well. Just hope he gets enough. I just worry about he's screen be, time and he's supposed to be in the Green Lantern show. Uh, yeah. But the big one, the main big one that I'm excited for, uh, Metamorpho was casted. Yeah, I think I saw that. By Anthony, or he's going to be casted as um, Anthony Kerrigan is playing it as him. Ooh. Noho Hank. Oh, yep, 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 yep. No, yeah. I, remember, yeah, I did see that. That one I'm excited for. Yeah. And he's funny. He's like, Metamorpho was always on my radar because as soon as he had the disease that made him bald and hairless, mm. um, he basically looked at all the bald, hairless characters <laughs> in the superhero world. And I'm like, I like Metamorpho. But he's Anthony Kerrigan's such a good actor. I'm like, it's oh, Meta- he's I'm like, hilarious. He's, love, he's hilarious. Larry. He's great. Um, Noho Hank. Did yeah. you watch season four? Of I haven't seen the last season yet. 
Oh. I'm waiting. I don't know what I'm waiting for, but I, I need guess to watch we can't it. watch Barry, or we can't talk Barry. No, we can't then. talk about Barry. No one's watched Barry. It's such a good show. Yeah, oh, I've seen the first three seasons, well, I know. but yeah, I haven't watched the last season. Yet. Such a great show. So Just I'm excited for him. Mm. All right, other uh, news. So, uh, or do you I think news? the obvious, well, the obvious fear of the Superman legacy thing is it's going to be like a Batman v superman situation where they just jam a bunch of random characters into it for no reason to try to establish them i mean i gotta i want to say i have faith in james gunn and stuff like that obviously because he is the best person but that that immediately makes that like sets off alarm bells i think that's what everyone's saying i don't think i'm alone in saying this no 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 no. i i agree there is always that that fear i just have such faith in james gunn yeah because he you think about his Guardians films, right? Yeah. Or oh, yeah. you think about uh, Suicide Squad. There are so many characters, so yeah, many that's references. True. That's true. Suicide Squad is a great great example of balancing active different characters. Yeah. But, yeah, there was no Superman in Suicide Squad. No. And there was no, like, real central protagonist Mm-mm. by design. Well, that's the question is, what is Superman Legacy about? Yeah, well, hopefully it's about Superman because that's kind of <laughs> that's but the like, worry, right? Is yeah. that it's it's not. Yeah, there, I mean, there's like I understand the concerns of it. There's all these different like heroes and stuff. The question is like how much, how big of a role they're gonna play. Yeah, I think gonna play a big role. Is it a team up film? Um, who I'm curious who the antagonist is gonna be of Superman Legacy. But no, I feel like this, I feel like the antagonist isn't gonna be as important. See, I think, I don't know. I feel like that's where Marvel and a lot of these have fallen flat so hard and so many times over. Because the is, antagonist? Yeah. Maybe I'll go that route for our episode. Yeah. For I had the thought. I had this idea. Of I like, mean, obviously, they have some very good. I mean, Loki and Thanos, very yeah. well done. Uh, pretty much every other villain in the oh, Marvel hold Cinematic up, hold Universe. Up, hold up, Not every other villain. I said pretty much, but you got... Okay, first, um, Vulture, Spider-Man: Homecoming. Okay, he. All right, I'll give you that one. There is there's another one. Yeah, he's got he's got a good story. Is is another Spider-Man villain? No. Okay, what's your other one? Um, I still don't think he's not like he wasn't like it wasn't a defining thing though. Like it was it was well done. He was really well done. He's, um, my friend Eric when he was on because we were talking films. He was saying that it was his favorite. That's his favorite villain in the entire MCU. And I was like... He's definitely the most relatable and like realistic. His yeah. motivations were explained well and believable. And yeah, he was done. I'll, and the I'll twist give you that. at the end. Or the twist in the middle of the movie. Where he's... You know, the, the father girl, of... Yeah. The girl that you like is like, oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's, it's, uh, it is very reminiscent of Gwen Stacy, though, in Spider-Man. A little bit, yeah. The whole, yeah. But it's still, yeah. No. Yeah. Okay, who's your, who's your other? Eric model? Killmonger. Kill, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't argue with that one. <laughs> but okay, so we got four villains. How many MCU projects are there with villains? Uh, okay, yeah. 40 percent, something? Yeah, Marvel's. 40 something? I want to say they have a Marvel problem because there was that whole talk of Marvel problem, right? They, they, they have a villain. Have a, they have a yeah. villain problem. Yeah, well, and they I, definitely have a Marvel problem. A Marvel problem. <laughs> a villain problem. <laughs> they had a villain problem. And I think, like, initially they did. Yeah. And I think phase three corrected that. Mm. Hella. Hella. Eric Killmonger. Yeah. Jake Jones, all the Mysterio. Yeah. Not, not amazing, but. Yeah, okay. So there are some be- better ones, but they're still not like... Phase 4 is not doing justice. Yeah. I don't know. But I, I'll, I I'll give you saying. that. There are there are some, you know, when you, when you bring up Mysterio and stuff, you know, better than some of the other ones. But I think that is also just a, a point that the Spider-Man movies are just kind of a step above a lot of the rest of the Marvel movies. Marvel Spider-Man movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he also has better villains. Yeah, well, will, in general, yeah, Spider-Man does I will say villains. that in general... Superhero films struggle with its villains. Yeah. Because I just watched The Flash, and that's also available, too. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to see it. I don't want to watch it. You're not even... Not even a little interested. You should. 
I think you should. I think it is worthy of watching it. I saw I saw the clip with the scene uh, where it shows all the different like cameos from the other worlds oh, and stuff like awful. that, and that was the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. They couldn't even get they could not CGI Nick Cage. Dude's still alive. <laughs> like I get it. You know, like the other ones, it was like okay, you know, whatever. I, yeah, yeah, I get it. You know, it doesn't look great. But then they show me Nick Cage, and I'm like, the dude is alive. <laughs> I I saw Nick Cage in it and I was like and I heard the story that he was CGI and I'm like, yeah. wait, what? Why? Not only that, yeah, yeah, and not only that, it was honestly like the most just like fan servicey disappointing yeah, yeah, yeah. scene. That's, they that, could have actually had Nick Cage in the movie and that would have made me see it. The fact that he's not even in it makes me yeah. Uh, Nick Cage would have been a selling point. I'll say that. He's my favorite actor. Here's what I want to say about the Flash. Because I gave it a four on my ratings. Initially. Four out of five? Four, yeah, four out of five. Four minus. You haven't watched it. You can't yeah, say shit. I don't, I don't need to watch it to tell you it's not that good. <laughs> no, it is. It starts out really good. It starts out, arguably, it starts out as like a 4 plus 5 minus. It was great. It was like, what happened to the Justice League on a normal day? They answered mm. that question. They show that. Mm. And it was exciting. The effects weren't great. Yep. But I think like the effects, for the most part, you can... I just watched the Star Wars prequels and uh, for... <laughs> Star Wars prequels came out 20 years ago. I know. But what my point is, like... And they're hated by everybody. No, they're they're, they're coming back. Well, yeah, just because Star Wars has gone even more down. What I'm saying but. is, like, the story it goes on. Yeah. Even with the effects are horrible. Flash, they have moments of really bad effects. They had a lot of moments. I've seen a lot. They have a lot of moments. But there's also a lot of moments where you're like, you, you kind of just get over it. The ending, the, sh- the movie starts well and gets bad. See, that's, that's a horrible... I'd rather it start bad and get good. Yeah, normally. Yeah. Like, it, get, it starts out really good. It starts out like, if you're a Flash fan, if you are a comic fan, you're going to enjoy it. It's really... It's an enjoyable movie. Mm-hmm. And then you get towards the end, and it's like, wait, why are they why are they fighting this war that they're in? Mm-hmm. And then it kind of becomes nonsensical. However, Ezra Miller should be canceled. Mm. It's one of the weirdest not-canceled moments ever. Yeah. He's fucking good at this film. Like, he's amazing. His performance is a five. Yeah, I, I mean, he's a good actor. I'm also I, pretty sure he I plays think, an autistic Barry Allen, and I also wouldn't be surprised if he's autistic himself. I, I think that people that are maybe sociopaths are particularly good actors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He he was really good. Yeah, I know. I I believe he's a good actor. I don't know. He, there was a point in this film where I cried, and this is actually the, in the ending of the film because he portrayed it just very, very well. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I teared up. I was like, this is emotionally thick. This is great. He's doing well. I mean, the plot's dumb at mm-hmm. the end. It is literally just um, Flashpoint, though. Yeah, I don't think I don't think you can fail on the CGI anymore. I don't think that's. I don't think that any movie can survive that anymore. I, I think say it either it failed. I think it failed. I think people would say it failed. I don't think it. Would, I would say it failed. The, the The director's whole like, "Oh yeah, we did this on purpose." Is kind of no. It's just bad CGI. No, yeah. Um, there are some parts, especially towards like that part of the movie where they do all the fan servicey shit and like the little bit before, um, they. Uh, this is slight spoilers, so if you don't want to hear this, skip two minutes. We'll probably be talking about something else. <laughs> um, when he goes into the Speed Force at the end of the movie, mm-hmm. and they show a bunch of like images of what happened at the end, mm-hmm. or like what's been happened in the movie, and it's like CGI people, and it looks. It, you ever go to a wax museum? Yeah, it looks like a wax museum. Yeah, just it's creepy as fuck. It might. Why? Why are you showing it this way? Like that's really bad. And even if it's purposeful, because sometimes I ask if it is purposeful or not. I'm like, mm, it looks. Well, bad. I think I think if it's purposeful, then it's even worse. <laughs> I think that that is an even less well, of an excuse. Well, I don't know. Like Bar- uh, in the new Barbie movie, they had a map that had a. A, a lot of people were pissed off about. Vietnam was pissed about. Yeah. And that was just like, <laughs> it was like a defense. So like, we just drew a map and crayon. We're not trying to say anything. Yeah. Whatever is in here is not what we're like. It, it's just a crayon 
a crayon drawing of the right. Barbie world. <laughs> right. And that, I'm like, it, that's where I deflect if it's on purpose. I'm like, it depends on how meta it is. If it's like yeah. a meta, or if it's, you know, like, you know, Barbie, for example, in crayon form makes sense because kids would make the world. It's a kid's mm. toy. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, but I don't know. I don't think that the Flash can get by, especially after how long. I will. I mean, how much time do they have to work on this movie? How many times do they go back and keep working on this movie? So I watched the Flash before Across the Spider Verse. Okay. And um, they're so both movies that, that deal with multiverse and yep. time travel. Yeah, and one is the best movie ever made, and one is one. Of yeah, the I watched movies. the Flash first. Yeah. So like, I watched it and like, oh, this is this is almost great. I put it as a four minus. Like, this is great. There's some moments that like it fell off at the end. But I enjoyed the film. I really did. The ba- there was a scene with a bunch of babies, and he had to save a bunch of babies. Mm. I like cringed the entire time. As a new dad, I was like, ugh. Yeah. <laughs> it's horrifying. Kind of funny. He cooks a baby. He cooks a baby? He cooks a baby. Okay. <laughs> <I don't... laughs> um, we definitely trailed off here. Yeah, a little bit. It's, it's the okay. winged episode. Yeah, yeah. It's the winged episode. We're winging it. I forgot my train of thought. Uh, babies. Flash. Flash, exciting. I don't know where I was going with that. Yeah, it's a bad movie. Or it's Spider Verse. How about oh yeah, the Multiverse. So I was watching the Flash first. That was great. And then I watched Spider Verse. I was like, holy shit, they did this ten times better. Yep. And I'm like, I understand why people don't like the Flash now. You watch this across the Spider Verse. You watch them masterly handle it. Yep, yep. And then you watch Flash, and they don't masterly handle it. They like they fumbled it. I would say. Mm-hmm. And I even think they was still great. They still fumbled the concept. Yeah. Because, like, the Spider-Verse, they have so many Easter eggs. Mm-hmm. But it's not like, hey, look, an Easter egg. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, a, wait a second, I didn't notice that before. Yep, yep. It's stuff that, yeah, it, it makes you want to watch it again. Yeah. There's, like, a they, uh, slight spoilers. Okay, no, not big spoilers. I haven't not seen that, but. I'll take, a, I'll take a slight spoiler. Can I tell you, like, one character that yeah, shows yeah. up? Yeah. That doesn't, it's not, not, it's an Easter egg. Okay. There's one scene where they go to Lego, Lego Spider Man universe. Okay. That sounds awesome. <laughs> it is. It's like, it reminds me of the Lego movie. Mm-hmm. And, like, the Lego Spider Man is just like, oh, yep, there is an incursion here. Beep, boop. <laughs> like, they just don't see him again, ever. Yeah. And I'm like, this is what's fucking awesome. Like, it's, it's a Easter egg that everyone loves. Mm. It's cre- creatively done. Mm. Like it's not forced. Right. It works in the function of the story, mm. but it's also an Easter egg, and it just it's, works. It's like exactly what people wanted to see with like yeah. Multiverse of Madness. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to see him like go to actually like some unique, different universes that maybe change things up. You know, like I don't how, mind that film. I just feel like their title was bad. How how cool would it have been if he would have been went into like the spider-man like uh multiverse yeah. into the spider-verse type thing and like got animated for a little while and was like in the animation style and stuff yeah, like how cool would that have been toyed with the idea but they yeah. didn't really like go ham they didn't yeah spider-verse like in or across the spider-verse they change up the um animation for every yep. universe mm-hmm it really makes it distinct and so I mean I haven't seen it but I I, I can I've seen trailers and stuff like Every that and it makes everything yeah it's just like different and it is a, a marvel of animation it is it's also a, well, let's use this as a segue <laughs> there's a lot of reports that they abuse their animators yeah and I'm like think about the movie that I watched think about how master class it was it reminds me of the movie Whiplash almost the movie Whiplash? Yeah, you ever watched the movie Whiplash? I feel like you did. Miles Teller, J.K. Simmons, drumming. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know if I've actually seen it. but The I whole idea, the, 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 the theme of that movie, the, uh, the message that they toyed around with is bullying someone to greatness, is it good or bad? Mm-hmm. And there's definitely a both sides to it. Like, mm. hey, this to person... This this pers- yeah, like this person had to go through this abuse and trauma to make this wonderful performance mm-hmm. but is also it worth it? yeah is it worth it or like is you but it's also abuse it's trauma mm. and so i think about whiplash and that message into ironically across the spider verse because jk simmons is also in that movie yep. spoiler alert I, I would hope so he should be attached to every spider-man product <laughs> sure. from now on 
Um, not a big it is in there. Um, so that whole idea is like this is like one of the best movies of all time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like it's in there because mm-hmm. everything's master class. Mm-hmm. And so when you hear reports that they made this movie under five years, mm-hmm. like, and if you watch the movie, you understand that it, it's crazy amount of crazy layers upon layers upon layers of animating that needs mm-hmm. to be done within five years. So it's not surprising to hear the abuse. Yeah. It's sad to hear it's not like what we support, but at the same time, it's like that whiplash. We weren't going to get that great drum solo, mm-hmm. that legendary drum solo, without the abuse. Mm-hmm. We weren't going to get across the Spider Verse in the time without the abuse of. And mm-hmm. I'm not saying the ends justify the means, but mm-hmm. I will say the end, the means were, or the the ending was the amazing. Product was good yeah it was no it's a great yeah it's a five like i i think i gave it a four plus five minus simply because it's a part one which is even fucking crazier it's only one movie the next movie comes out next year oh i didn't know that yeah it's a part one it ends it ends it reminds me of like a graphic novel okay where like the the issue will end and like the story will be to be continued yeah that's where it ends it's like it ends on a cliffhanger it says to be continued and you're like I wait okay. a year before this thing comes out. Okay, so I should wait a little while before I watch it, so that way I don't have to wait as long for the. Next uh, well, actually, no, I just guess, watch yeah. it right away and then rewatch it again. Okay, watch it multiple times. Okay. <laughs> so, but let's segue into yeah, the yeah. topic that we have the idea for, and I have another idea, but we might we might just make another episode. I don't know. Yeah. So let's talk about the writer strike. Yes, the writers and the actor strike. Writers, yeah, now actor strike. and Sag. Saying, uh, wait, wait, what's the writers? Wag, writers Actors Guild. Wag? Yeah. Wag and SAG. Uh, Wag and SAG. So there's a lot of push for like, content creators, whether or not we should talk about the movie the movie industry altogether. Mm-hmm. And I want to address this. And I might just address this on its own, because I know a lot of other content creators who are my size are like, we're not going to talk about this. I feel that it is almost detrimental if we don't talk about it at least for a newer channel however i don't want to go off and here is my stance on all this mm. the right the actors themselves both way and say says still watch your movies still mm. support the great art mm. we didn't call for a boycott right Still watch it, still support it, because that's our work, that's our love, that's our art. Still talk right. about it. So um, that's what I want to follow. If they call for a boycott, boycotting it. Okay. Yeah. I, it's it's a fine line to dance, especially for a lot of people that are in the space, that, yeah. that are adjacent to the space, I guess I should say, because yeah. you're not really in it. Um. Yeah, I I'm know. also not part of saying or what. Like, yeah, I'm not part of yeah. It. But at the same time, it does. I do feel like there's a lot greater implications to the whole thing. Yeah. To consider, um, this is like one of the only organizations, or one of the few organizations that are actually capable of doing something like this, like organizing such a big movement uh, to On a oppose very public scale. Yeah, to oppose things that are not only affecting their industry but going to very soon be affecting every industry in a lot of ways Mm -hmm. and setting an example now and setting a precedent now is really the only chance that kind of everyone has in my opinion oh i agree i am full support as like a a, a fellow human yeah Uh, a a citizen of the american United, united states i support this heavily like i want them to win I, I you know it's funny talking about the spider-man thing it makes me wonder is there a, a union for like graphic designers and stuff like that and uh, artists and stuff i don't know if there's a made there should be yeah there should be because that is i mean they're a whole industry that definitely is under, overworked and underpaid yeah and and to clarify and also I, very much in danger of losing a lot of their jobs yeah. to ai and stuff too and to to clarify all this too, I don't think like anyone should have to go through abuse to make great art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just yeah, I know. Yeah, the, I support the 
there is that argument of like is the abuse necessary for great art i will say like for great art in general i think great art takes time they're great to yep. great art in five years to do what across the spider-verse did yeah i'm pretty sure the abuse was needed for that to happen and i'll be honest if someone if i was presented the choice hey you can get spider-verse in five years or 10 years the only difference is if you do check the five these hundreds or thousands of people will have to go through abuse every day i'm picking 10 years yeah i can wait yeah i agree we can all wait we can wait for greatness to happen Mm -hmm. so i'll pick that any day so i just wanted to clarify see you know and i guess and i think that it doesn't even necessarily come down to more time i think uh if they pay people more money more people will want to do the job there will be more people in the industry to do the job yeah therefore there will be more people able to work on said job at any given time with skills and qualifications in a appropriate manner to where they can actually do the job the right way in a good amount of time with yeah. everyone being paid appropriately and treated correctly you know it's just about propping up the industry itself because you know especially now, unless you're really passionate about it which there are a lot of people but like with what you know like knowing that uh, working with Marvel, for example, in like the CGI space is like the best place you can be in a sense, and it's also yeah. the worst place you can be at the same time. Yeah. Why would somebody who's on the fence about something like that job path want to choose that line of work when those are their options? Yeah. Hey, here's a dream job working for a giant company. Yeah. These working for that you, you love. Yeah. That you love your doing your art but hey you're dealing you're not getting paid yeah you're, you're gonna get paid like crap you're gonna get treated like crap and you're gonna work 80 hours a week right well it's like anyone in their job field like hey like you're top of your line mm-hmm. or like the furthest you can take this is you're not getting paid yep uh comic book writers also have to deal with this too mm-hmm. like they're like some of the bigger ones they get paid royalties but mm-hmm. for the most part they're not it's it is absurd to me how little respect writers get yeah in in the whole world of things when it is so very obvious uh the impact that good writing has what we have a little friend on the microphone is there a friend on the microphone oh yeah it's on the oh. court <laughs> i didn't see him it freaked me out a little bit he's coming oh, after me really you. fast i flick him on you oh sorry <laughs> he's gone now we're good are you still recording i don't know uh you flipped the cord yeah uh, we're good still picking up my mic i think we're good okay uh, back to what we we're saying. Uh, I think the fact that we don't appreciate good writing, what it very obviously makes a big difference between like a show like Breaking Bad and Game Better of Thrones. Console. Yeah, and then the ending of Game of Thrones. Like yeah, it's that's obvious. A good, that's a pretty good comparison. Yeah, it, it's the obvious where end of Game of Thrones and the ending. Of yeah, Game of Thrones. it's pretty obvious where the writing. And I mean, obviously, there's other factors too. It's not just like the writer has full say. That yeah. I think that is also. Uh, another issue in the industry from my understanding is just that writers that create this work they then sell it to a studio or something like that and then they have no more say on it at all which in a sense i get it but if you're willing to pay somebody because they wrote something that you liked enough to want to make something out of it it seems like it might be a good person to keep around in order to ask questions to do rewrites instead of hiring somebody else to rewrite the script that they already wrote well let's take a let's go avatar last airbender that okay. franchise. Uh, M. Night Shyamalan was making a movie. Mm-hmm. And initially, he had the writers, the creators of the show on. And then he kept missing every single feedback they had. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they left. Yep. They're like, oh, you don't need us because you're obviously not taking any feedback. Right. Where is that movie now that ranks today? It's the worst movie ever made. It's a one for it's a one minus. It, I, I can't finish that movie because it's so never, fucking yeah, bad. I've never seen it. Never want to see it. Yeah, here's the thing. I like, went to see it. I'm like, I know this movie's bad. I'm going to watch it for laughs. Mm. I can't. I'm just too mad. Yep. I'm like, how how do you ruin? Such a great, uh, uh, one of the best series. Yeah. and like It's, stories it's a told. hard story. It's probably a hard story to put live action. Oh, yeah. Especially like, into a movie. You could at least make a meh movie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could, at the very least, you know, I, I think the problem with a lot of these things is they try to take a story that's told over five seasons of a TV show, you know, or even over a, a season and a half of a TV show, and they try to compress it down 
into the time frame of a movie, and it just doesn't work. No, it doesn't. Some things need to be told as long form stories. So I have another idea that kind of like, that would that would have been a perfect segue into that, but I kind of want to still finish on the writers. Yeah, yeah. Um, overall, I I hope they pay the writers because it's bull or it's bullshit that they pretty much cut them out of streaming. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, one hundred percent. They they transitioned to streaming like that's just the world transition and instead of continuing the deal and moving that deal into streaming, they were like, yeah, we're just gonna take the money. Yep. Yeah, I'm just gonna pay you less now. Yeah. We're, we're going to take this as a win. We're, mm. we're going to keep these revenues, and you're going to get paid less. To the point where writers can't they can't afford to... Like, it's such a bad move on the executives and the producers. Like, it's such a bad move on their part because here's the thing. If the job doesn't pay well to do it, why do it? You do it out of exactly. love. Exactly. And there are people that will. There yeah. are still people that just love the game. Yeah, you're shutting off a whole... Field. And even there... And, and so many people that, that may love it and be good at it, but it's just not an option for them because they need, you know, financial support. They can't pursue this dream of writing when, at best, they might, you know, make some paltry money here or there. Yeah, they might get royalties or something. Yeah, it's just a lottery at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, acting. Now a lot of people are like, "Oh, why are big actor name actors getting mad over this?" Like they don't understand it. Yeah, it's it's not for the big actors. It's for. Every, it's for the ninety five percent of actors who aren't big names. It's for the guy that plays the the cashier at Starbucks. Yeah, or in the, movie the, or the that old lady that plays the old lady at a grocery store in the yep. background. Yep, that's got two lines. Yeah, and doesn't do a whole or lot. Or doesn't have any lines. Or yeah, just the fact that like yeah, you background actors deserve to. You shouldn't have things stolen, like your likeness stolen. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. That or is paid the most, off for a very that is amount. like everyone says straight up Black Mirror. It's yeah. hilarious that Netflix just released that episode of Black Mirror, and mm-hmm. then they come out with this, like, and it's literally like Netflix is you know one of the companies that are behind, you know, yeah. they're one of the studios that are that's doing it. Yeah, and they literally, yeah, it's just uh, I was watching something the other day, and they're just talking about how funny it is that I think it was Hassan talking about uh, how companies and stuff they don't care if you're being like negative towards them. Like you can be, you know, like be work on Twitch, like you said, and talk as much bad stuff as you want about Amazon, because at the end of the day, you're still making that money. Yeah. They don't care that you're being negative and stuff because you're not actually affecting the bottom line. In fact, you're actually making them money. Yeah. And uh, the whole any press is good press. Yeah. Yeah. And it kind of falls into the same category, I guess, that it doesn't matter that. Uh, yeah, kind of like it do, yeah, it doesn't matter like that they're being bad or being seen as like these big evil greedy companies because oh yeah the Netflix thing yeah because they're making money off of it yeah they care about the bottom line yep. they're still making money cool yep yep yeah so they can release an episode of Black Mirror that's literally showing the dystopian future that they are trying to create yeah. let's, unironically and then still ask to create that future let's 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 segue to that. Mm. Because my other idea that I had to talk about is what do we want in great art? What do the audience want? What do we mean you want in great art? And I think that's an interesting question because the capitalism has taken over this industry. And it always capitalism has. taken over everything. Yes. And it always was in control of the industry. However, it is taken over the industry harshly to the point where it's now ai being generated yeah streaming it's, i think has made it even worse just with the accessibility and the amount that they're able to put out <laughs> the the very season three reference hey your show is a 98 rotten tomatoes but uh the algorithm doesn't like it because there's not enough buzzwords so we're gonna just <laughs> cut your, yep your show is just canceled yep yep as soon as the, like, the release they happen yep yeah I, yeah that's exactly how it is. Yeah. And like, it's a little absurd, but I'm like, it, it is how it works because mm-hmm. like, Hey, it doesn't have like the, it doesn't have blueberry muffins. Audience loves blueberry muffins. Mm-hmm. Like it's ridiculous. Like mm-hmm. where's the art? Cause we look back. What's the great, uh, what are some movies that we look back that are amazing, but we look at the box office and it's not great. Well, let, I'll give you two examples of two different movies. Avatar, not the, uh, the last Avatar. Avatar. That movie made lots of money, right? Yeah, you're talking about James Cameron's Avatar? Yep. Never seen it. 
Come on, man. Nope, on principle. It's Dances with Wolves with CGI. It, I mean, basically is. It, it, it is. It's, it's, the CGI is still amazing, though. Don't care. CGI is amazing. But this is what I'm talking about. This movie made lots and lots of money. Is it good art, though? No. CGI is great. Yeah, no. I, but the story is... Dances with Wolves. It's a story yeah. that's been done. Yeah. It, it's a updated story. Mm-hmm. And they, they they don't even, like, say it's a Dances with Wolves remake. It's not like Lion King. Yeah. It, or, like, Lion King is, like, Hamlet, but it's such a... They put their own spin on yeah, it. Yeah, it yeah, becomes yeah. its own thing. Yeah, no, it is almost beat for beat Dances with Wolves with Aliens. Yeah. So... But that's that's my point. Is it great art? TGI is great, but overall the story is meh. Now another movie that did horrible at the box office. Ah, blanking on the name, I hate it. Uh, Judge Dredd. Oh yes. Dredd the movie. Yes, yes. That movie did horrible box office. You're referring to the one with Carl Urban, correct? Yes. Not the one with Sylvester Stallone. Yes. Okay. Carl Urban. Yeah. That movie's phenomenal. I love that movie. That movie holds up so well. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. That movie is art. One of the best comic book movies ever made. But that movie didn't sell. Mm-hmm. So it didn't get a sequel. Yep. And I I know, like, these movies are expensive to make. So mm-hmm. there, like, there needs to be capital gains. But how many times are you just like, man, I wish they would just make this great art? Yeah, for the, for the love of the game. For the love of art. For the love of, like, telling a great story. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So I always had that. Like, that was kind of my idea of like, what, what? Give me a property, and try to think of like the best story that we can come up with it. Fuck capitalism. Fuck the money aside. Mm-hmm. You know. I think I do think that that's where a lot of independent films and stuff like that do come into play. Yeah. Because they are willing to take a lot more risks and do yep. things that may or may not work and may or may not appeal to a wide. Audience. I think that's the biggest thing is just. Uh, always trying to appeal to the lowest common denominator. Always trying to get as many people as you can interested in it. Which is like when not, that's amazing. Yeah, when it's not not everything is meant to be enjoyed by everybody. Yeah, it it shouldn't be. You can't design things that everyone's going to enjoy. People are too different. Jeremy Johns made a joke that I thought was hilarious because he was reviewing Barbie, mm. and he's like, "This movie's definitely in my target. <laughs> I'm definitely in the target audience for this movie." <laughs> <laughs> You know, he's some, he looks like a greaser in his yeah. leather jacket. <laughs> Talking about the park. Which I actually think it is, uh, ironically, in his brain, or in his target audience. I, yeah, it's definitely going for, like, 30-year-olds, I think. Actually, I, I want to watch that movie. Yeah, I don't it think... It looks meta enough. It looks like yeah. Lego, the Lego movie. I'll wait. You'll wait? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, I have to wait. Yeah. Um, but getting into that, the whole art... If you had to make a movie for art, how would you make a movie? Uh, it would be a horror movie, I'll tell you that much. you make a horror movie? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I think horror is the best genre of movies. I think it's the most creative. Ooh. It's the most free. I don't. They can. Uh, it's low budget. Yeah, it, 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 exactly. It's, uh, it's the most expressive uh, and able to do things and go places that other movies can't go. That's fair. I actually, I have a love hate relationship with the horror genre. Okay. So I know a lot of people love the horror genre and like Big they'll horror watch horror. every horror film. Oh, I don't. I mean, there's uh, there's there's good horror movies and there's like every bad genre. horror. Yeah, and then there's uh, good bad horror movies and then there's just bad horror movies. I like the good horror movies and the good bad horror movies. The, but there's they're just good a, that you can laugh at. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The 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 ones that are so absurd. Those Ooh. movies are fun. Yeah, exactly. I will it's say so the much movies, fun. The movies you can have you the most fun with horror movies. I agree. Especially the most ridiculous premises. I love the premises of horror movies, mm-hmm. but it, sometimes I I don't like the execution of a lot of horror movies. I don't like the tropes that horror movies. So the when the horror movies are doing the thing where they dumb it down to the lowest common denominator and try to appeal to as many people as possible. Yeah. That. Yeah. Or, you know, like, they just do the whole group of teenagers. They do the teenage, you know, teenager yeah. things. And, oh, bad teenagers, uh, kill them all. I will say uh, there's not a lot of movies like that anymore. It's, doesn't, it's not really a... It was an 80s slash. Yeah, that was... It I mean, obviously, down. Yeah, it's definitely died down a lot. I mean, there is some stuff now and with younger people and stuff like that. But the whole... Uh, I think the slasher genre in general is 
a lot more dead than it used to be. I mean, Scream Six just came out. That's like trying to reinvigorate it, but I can't. I heard even, the movie is actually pretty good. I didn't I, watch I've it. heard, yeah, I haven't seen it yet either. Scream was always one of those uh, movies that kind of just it was it very redefined, meta. Yeah, yeah, it redefined, yeah, it redefined the horror genre yeah. when it was when it did get to that point where it was so boring and stale. Yeah, it was the movie that reinvigorated the horror. Genre. I do like Scream. I yeah. like certain films, like Cabin in the Woods. I was just going to say, that's funny, because I was just going to say, I think Cabin in the Woods is like I the more modern day it. together. No. We did see it together in did theaters. We? Yeah. I remember seeing it for my birthday. Yeah, I think we saw it. I think I seen it twice in theaters. I saw it with you. So you were with me and my girlfriend at the time. Yeah, I think so. That sounds we'll right. I remember we we definitely seen it together yeah. at one point. Cabin in the Woods, I love. I that, got an argument think, if it's horror or if it's sci-fi. I'm like, it's both. Yeah, I, that, that's the other thing with horror is like it's just like it's such a broad thing. Like it can be anything. You know, you can have, you can have like faith based horror. Mm-hmm. You can have your sci fi horror. You can have like your cosmic horror, which is my favorite. You can have you know your slash bear horror. horror. Is your favorite uh, cosmic horror? Cosmic horror. It's a little. I, I consider it a little different than sci fi horror. Well, sci fi is hor- like sci fi is interesting because sci fi is like horror, but in a different degree. Yeah, I, like Alien is. Well, some people will be like, "Is that sci-fi horror?" I'm like, "No, Alien is technically sci-fi by like, default, by the yeah, definition d- of sci-fi, but it's also like it is horror." I think I think Alien One, I think is a horror movie. Yeah, Alien. I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I know <laughs> Aliens. <laughs> uh, I think I think the second and third one does get more into the sci-fi. James Cameron did Aliens, right? That was James Cameron that did <sighs> Aliens. Maybe it's. I know it was somebody, but That's I feel the like best film. yeah. Scott really did the first one. Yeah, I know Dave David Fincher did the third one. Yeah, you think the second one's the best? Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. I think you're probably right. And it's not a horror film. It's literally just a sci-fi film. The second yeah, one, it's a it's, sci-fi action. Film. It's with with horror elements. I mean, uh, I think like the survival aspects of it. I think it just kind of lends to the the horror feel and the yeah. atmosphere. Uh, I it wasn't. Just, I wasn't as scared in the second. No, one. the first one was like. The, yeah, they played it very claustrophobic. You know, didn't show the alien a whole lot. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it was good. And then the third one was uh, I watched the so I recently watched this series, the Alien series, the first three. I think I also watched the fourth one too. Yeah, I watched the first four. Okay. And I watched it recently, and I wanted to do a video on it. I kind of want to do a state of review on Alien, simply because it's such a f- interesting series. Mm-hmm. Because you have three, four directors with very different visions. And all four different visions, trying to tell a, a story with the same actress in it, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and somehow it works. And it doesn't work at the same time. Yeah, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. I mean, like as a franchise, like I wouldn't have it any other way. The fact that you're able to, the fact that the all movies are so different. Are yeah, too. yeah, they are. They're all uh, well, all right, elite Scott, directors. Scott really amazing. Just. I mean, Alien yeah. was his big breakout. Um, if it is James Cameron that did the second one, I believe it's James Cameron. Then obviously, not, yeah, James Cameron and, and, obvi- and David Fincher. I mean, Fight Club, yeah. Zodiac Killer. Um, I'm trying to think of the recent one that he did recently. And then, uh, shoot, I, I'm blanking on the name of the fourth one. He did Avengers. Uh. <sighs> I don't know if he Buffy, directed Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah, Joss, Joss Whedon. Whedon. Joss yeah. Whedon. I don't know if he directed. I know he wrote it. Okay. Okay. I don't know if he directed it. I, he might have directed it, and but I'm like, I remember his. He was heavily involved with the project. Okay. And I'm like, it's definitely Joss. It's, just, it, it's a Joss. He's Whedon. got a very yeah distinctive. Thing. You know, yeah. It's bad and it's good at the same time. Buffy had a very big impact on my life. I watched that show all the time when I was younger. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite shows. Uh, so like the whole, I mean, Joss Whedon, his whole comedy and everything like that, I guess. He's a big influence on me. It is uh, sad looking back now and seeing all the stuff about him. That comes back to the conversation. Yeah. Is it, He made great art. Yeah. He was also abusive. Right. Ends justify the means. Uh, I just, I, I got to believe that you can make good art without the abuse. You can. And, and if that's possible, then I don't think it's excusable. It's fair. It's a good point. It's a solid point. All right, back to the topic though. Yeah. So horror is your favorite genre of making oh, great far. art. I actually have um, 
I'm trying to go back in the conversation. You ever watch It Falls? No, but I've, I I have, n- I have never watched this, uh, seen the movie, but I am familiar with almost every horror movie, so I do know. It Falls. You yeah, should watch, watch it. everything about it. I was told I should, I was, my sister gave me the recommendation to watch it. Okay. Or she gave Sapphire the recommendation, and Sapphire was like, she's a huge horror fan. Okay. Cool. Um, that her comfort movies are horror movies. Mm. It is it chapter two specifically. I've yep. watched that movie a lot of times. I Great grew movies. up with the book. Yeah. Grew up with Stephen King. I get to the point where I'm almost like I'm not like sick of it, but I'm like, do we have to watch this? Yeah, <laughs> I'd be curious to see what the next one is in um, five years. But it it follows is interesting. Supernatural did a, a episode based on the same premise, mm. and I remember watching the episode. I'm like, they're just copying it. Falls, but the premise is like someone curses them, and like this figure, this um thing that constantly that no one else can see except for those who are cursed can see mm. and it will constantly follow you and if it gets to you it kills you mm. and then moves on the next person on the list mm. and all and you have to do is, is you you have to have sex with more people yeah and i'm like it's, it's a like, sexually transmitted demon yeah and i'm like this is a freaky like premise like mm-hmm. you're always gonna die mm-hmm. like the, you're always, the inevitability of it yeah so it's like it just put my whole like what would i do in this situation mm-hmm. right and like that's, the actor, horror movies like, can do that yeah there's also that's where it gets bad though it's like when your characters are stupid and they yeah make stupid choices it's like i like horror video games more because you are the person making the choices yeah to me that's more terrifying Watching yeah oh, other I, agree. People, I agree i agree i mean i don't get scared of horror movies but i do love them um so i have another private premise for a horror movie that I wanted to do. I have a few of them that I wanted to do. I wanted to make a horror zombie. And maybe I shouldn't talk about these. I probably won't ever get to do them. But I always wanted to write this one. So I'm going to give you a couple premises of things I would like to do in horror. Okay. I don't like, I'm not always the biggest fan of it, but I've always thought about doing it. Because if you're right, there is so much you can do. You can do horror. anything in horror movies. And it's, it's a... Okay. The suspension of disbelief. I is like the genre. In. I just don't like the execution and the hype of the genre because I feel like a lot of people hype up trash. Yeah, that's why. I, that's where. Yeah, I, I, my I, criticism. I, I, I blame from. Facebook and I don't TikTok for that. I just for all the no. It's it's all it's all those hype marketing things that have come out the last like five years where they're like, oh, this is the scariest movie I've so ever I'm seen. Movies, yeah, yeah every yeah every every month there's a new scariest movie. I couldn't finish it. People are collapsing in the theater. It's all just clickbait. I don't. Believe, I, I like. I've never seen. And then I'll movies. watch it. It's not scary. It's just or like it's just all jump scares. And it's yeah, scary. It's just trash. Like yeah, uh, I don't paranormal. Like the first one is great. Yeah, it holds up. Which everyone after that. I was never interested in it. The first. I watched the first one and I enjoyed it. I like great stories in horror. Yeah, there's just not like great stories. I think yeah, I think the reason why Paranormal Activity one specifically was so good is just because it it was different. Yeah. It was it, and and it was shot so like well and so dirty mm-hmm. that it just felt so real. Oh. It was very very reminiscent of the say, Blair Witch. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Blair Witch is one yeah, of those movies when I it first watch. came out. Yeah, I tried watching Blair Witch and I was like, I don't like this movie. It's not it's not well shot. Yeah, that's but on, it's that's on purpose. So. I know. Yeah, I know that's on purpose, but I'm like it. I couldn't get through with it, but I understand. So you're why not people, into the found footage genre, you don't. I don't. Think. I like Cloverfield. I've never seen that one. <laughs> never watched Cloverfield. <laughs> yeah, there's a whole I've universe. Seen, I've, now. Yeah, I've seen. I've seen all the sequels. <laughs> but you never watched Cloverfield. <laughs> no, too much. Too much shaking. It is a lot of shaking. Sick. Yeah, running around found you're, footage you're, running is too much. It is. As, as us kids, when we watched it, we're like, oh, yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're adult, you're like, oh, I just want to vomit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, so here's my premises, or premises that I have. Oh, no. It went black. Are we still recording? We looks took, like it. It looks like it. We never took a break. Well, too late now. Yeah. I might blanking on the. Oh, yeah. So the, uh, the musical. Zombie musical. Okay. So the premise of this zombie musical. This is like every zombie movie, right? Okay. College kid comes back to town. Notice, like, notices everyone. Everyone's fine, but everyone's like happier. Like they're singing songs, like they're whistling. Okay. But what's happening is everyone's turning to zombies, but not just any zombies. 
Zombies that sing musicals. <laughs> I, 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 you got me already. Because you know, I was just gonna say the best genre of horror movie subgenre. Yeah, comedy horror, black comedy, mm-hmm. dark comedies are yep. the best. And that's what this is. And the whole idea is like, as the movie goes on, you see people singing along as they're killing. Yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> la, 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 da, 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 da. like stab, 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 and like throughout the movie people that you run across are slowly more singing more and mm. more and more and towards the end of the film you know there's going to be a group of college kids mm. i had this written down where like beat by beat by beat but mm. i don't quite remember it. it's been a while since i look at it you know her high school it's a the female is the lead her high school sweetheart is the next door all the common tropes best friend they go mm. to go save her best friend, and they walk in, and they like they hear him singing, and they're immediately panicking. Happy singing, by the way, because mm. all these zombies are happily singing, and they just become more violent. Okay. And like, they notice they try to get their families out because like, oh, we're, there's a music zombie virus, mm. and they go to their families and like, hey, we gotta go out, and like, why, honey? And and they, like, they hear the bum. In the background, and like, where the fuck is that music coming from? Yeah. And all the family coming down the stairs, like, mm-hmm. the, like the son and dad's coming out of the garage, and all like, bum, bum, <laughs> bum, 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 come here, daughter, join the family together. <laughs> and, and they're just singing. They're like, they're panicking. Yeah, yeah. But they they're running away, and the family's like chasing after them with knives, and they're all like, come join the family fun. <laughs> I, I like that. And like, neighbors are all coming, and I think like the very last scene, because like, you know, at that they all have to hide out at the night, and they, they're trying to like, escape the town from the zombie virus, and they can just hear singing in the background. Mm-hmm. Singing, cars crashing, chaos, people screaming, but at the same time singing, it's like mm-hmm. a mixture of dread, on top of happy music, mm. and I'm thinking like the, the last, juxtaposition. And I think like the last scene is them running away, and literally the like the entire town is chasing after them, and it's just one big musical scene. Okay, yep. <laughs> and, just and a it, continuous shot, and the movie ends with them getting cornered, mm. and then like their family's just like bump, 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 <laughs> bump, and, and like the movie fades to black. Mm. And then the after credit scene, it just opens up again. <laughs> and then you open up and see the two main characters singing and dancing, singing and dancing <laughs> all happily. Yeah, and boom, that's the movie. I like it. And that, yeah, that's that, that that one. I think I wrote that one when we were working at McDonald's together. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I will just put this out as a disclaimer that we are not uh, trying to pitch writing ideas to scab. <laughs> other people <laughs> just just throw that out there yeah we're not trying to take a, an opportunity no writing will be done no no no, no. <laughs> i will not take over any writing roles yeah yeah because yeah. I, uh, I will take all the writing roles once the strike is over because since you said that i i gotta i gotta pitch the idea that i've had for a long time it's something right. that i worked on and i have bit. one more too that i recently came up okay. with you gotta listen to my pitch first once again not for anybody else um so uh, I've had an idea for a, a cartoon. I want to make a cartoon show. Okay, is this horror or is this a random? Pitch? It, it is horror. Okay. Uh, it's it's a horror comedy. Uh, I think it would be perfect for like uh, Adult Swim. That's kind of where I'm, where I'm thinking is where it fit. Okay, nice. So the premise is uh, uh, it's gonna be kind of like split into two separate stories, kind of going on concurrently. Okay. Okay. The like a story is going to be uh, a cult, like a, a cult of like Cthulhu worshiping, you know, like cosmic type mm-hmm. things. Uh, and they're like trying to summon, you know, like Cthulhu type thing to Earth. Uh, and that it's going to be that will be shot or like animated as, you know, like a cartoon and kind of played off like Office, the Office style. Ooh, not nice. not quite yeah not quite yeah. the office but you know like kind of like an office comedy type thing yeah where except for there are like cult members that are like being forced to do like crazy things and stuff like that or things they might not want to but they're also just like going through their day-to-day lives trying to yeah. live in this cult and survive 
So that's like the A plot of the story, and then the B plot. So that'll be like you know regular cartoon, bright, colorful, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And the B plot is going to be animated in black and white, all the shots. So like it'll be a distinct mm-hmm. tone change yeah. uh, between the two, and it's going to be about uh, a private eye detective uh, who is gets kind of caught into like this uh, mystery, uh, where basically he gets starts kind of investigating into like the things that the cult is doing yep. uh, and because of their things that they're doing he is living through this like very like terrifying like gritty cosmic horror type reality as mm-hmm. a direct result of like these goofballs and stuff yeah. like that doing this cult stuff so it'll be like you know this juxtaposition i like that word yeah of you know like the comedy and the lighthearted, bright and colorful and then all of a sudden it'll go like the black and white where this guy is like literally losing his mind like madness like real dark Interesting. twisted yeah. you know things and then it cuts back to you know <laughs> the cult where they're just like they screwed something up and you know like whatever and that's what's causing directly the things to happen to, to the b you're plot. supposed to blow up the corner on second and third not first and fourth there's, uh, thinking, a, there's, thinking, a, there's a there's a yeah thinking more <laughs> more along lines of like you're supposed to summon this demon here or something oh, like that yeah. but nothing happened oh turns out that our private eye is now face to face with this monster <laughs> thing that just brutally murdered this like person it. yeah I like that it reminds yeah. me of a I had a, it was a joke pitch that I did before uh, so this is when I was working in clinic with um, kids who are autistic mm. and when you work with these like populations. One, well, one of the terms are one of the phrases or sayings that we have is if you meet a kid with autism, you met with one kid with autism because they're all different. Oh, yeah. But some of these kids, like, if you to change one thing, their whole days could be ruined mm-hmm. or their hour could be ruined. Like, it's a bigger deal than it's not. Mm-hmm. And one of the funny things was for us as adults who work there. Everything so it seems so minuscule, like minuscule, mm-hmm. and we were joking around, having our own jokes, and I'm like, oh, it'd be cool to have like a Rugrats type of TV show, where you show the adults joking around, you know, like, hey, I want, um, I want this for lunch, not, I want pizza for lunch, not French fries and chicken nuggets, mm-hmm. and the kid like is freaking out, and so you have the two different versions of the show. You have the dramatic version, which is from the kid's side you know like oh it's like the end of the world i want pizza yeah and like it's shot in this like very dramatic format and then like you go into the adult world and you have a kid going like i want pizza like throwing things around like oh shit what's yeah. On? Yeah. <laughs> yeah and like it'd just be cool to have like that just position where you have like two different viewpoints mm. one's very serious one's not and that's mm. what your pitch reminds me of yeah yeah and i'm like i love it i love mm. the idea of having like you know, a not like a casual look on crazy cults, mm, mm. and then you have somebody who's dramatically like, I have to deal with these monsters, mm. and then you meet the monsters, and they're just. I'm, I'm assuming they're, a lot of them are incompetent. Well, so incompetent and in, like doing the job. Correctly. Yeah. Well, I I think my 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 plan is is to play the the detective side of the story very straight. Yeah. And very serious and stuff like that. So anything that he encounters and anything from his perspective is going to be very terrifying and horror or whatever. Yeah. Not not really a whole lot of comedy in that. The comedy would come from uh on that side and in, in the absurd like bleakness or uh like I said, I love dark comedy, black comedies, you know, like things where like when somebody just like dies out of nowhere and stuff like that, that'll get me get yeah. me laughing all the time. You know, like I, pulp I fiction. Just, so my writer brain is already gone in your universe mm-hmm. and I can just imagine like your detective dealing with like some horrific monster mm. some like let's say like a demon dragon or something mm. and he's just like oh my god and he's like ready to go deal with it demon. Mm. what monster would summon this type of thing and mm. then switch to the other world like all right who's the fucking idiot who summoned <laughs> yeah. the demon dragon yeah. uh, that was me sir yeah. God damn it! You're supposed to summon the squid. This thing's gonna destroy everything. Yeah. The squid is supposed. To- <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's exactly yeah, yeah, exactly that kind of stuff. You know, just like yeah, things like sacrificing like a person, and then like the people are just like you know like eating a sandwich while they're doing it, like that kind of stuff. You know, oh. like like very just like 
I just have another one. The detective comes to like a girl who's just ripped the shreds. Mm, that was the and, first episode. And he's just like, oh, these fucking goddamn animals. And he's like, sir, did you get the memo from that I sent you last that last night? Mm. What memo? You didn't get the memo. Who did you kill? <laughs> um, Emily from this so and so company. You didn't get the memo. <laughs> what? What do you, what are you? I did what you told me to do. No, she, we're sacrificing virgins. <laughs> she just had sex the night before. <laughs> You're summoning to nothing. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I didn't know. Exactly. That's why you're supposed to get the goddamn memo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think there's something very comical about playing something like a cult, uh, 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 like having it structured like a corporate office, <laughs> like very much like it's underground and stuff like that. Yet it's very much like you know, like straight up the guy from Office Space, like coming over, like, uh, yeah, I'm gonna need you to to turn in that papers by four here. <laughs> yep. mm, yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Oh, Bill, what are you doing today? Uh, I got to torture some individual on level nine. Oof, torturing on a Monday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it just won't give us the information we need. Yep, yep. I love it. I love yeah. that pitch. If yeah, you need I help think... writing it, I will, I will, I'm in. Okay. Well, well, wait, we're not part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're not, not we're not, we're not, but. I'm in until someone hires you. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, you I mean, I, you can, I feel you can still write for your own leisure. You yeah, know, like for yourself, you just you can't sell things. You can't write in for studios or like pitch ideas, but you could definitely still. Right. I have one more pitch, and okay. then we, we can call, call the winged episode over. Okay, because we can go forever. We could go, and forever. I have a limit at two uh, two hours, and we're almost there. It's All right, good. so we I mentioned it. Yes, and I got this idea of watching it. Okay, so the show or not the show? Well, technically, the first one was a show. It's a TV movie. Okay. So the story of it, the movie of it, mm. is he's an ent- he's an evil entity, right? A mm. uh, godlike figure mm. or a demon-like figure where you can shape shape the many things, and he fe- needs to feed every thirty years or so, and mm. he feeds he feeds off fear. Mm. So he shape shifts to create as much fear as possible before eating his victims, right? Mm. Ter- terrifying concept. Absolutely. But I had the thought, what if you did the opposite of that? Yeah. Like what if what if you done happiness and joy? Hope. Hope. <laughs> Instead of like Yeah, so like hope. So I'm thinking like opening the movie. You have like this new person in your life who's let's use streaming. Let's use podcasts. Let's use like our uh, industry. This person finally made their breakthrough mm. you know they're they're signing a deal for uh youtube for extended rights mm. for streaming super happy super and he his success all started happening when he met bob mm. you know he finally had his breakthrough he signed all the papers everyone's cheering happiness he's ready to go like yeah my thing's about to happen and i couldn't have done it all it's all because of you bob he's like you're right. And then everyone else leaves the room is just him and Bob. And Bob out of nowhere just <laughs> eats him. I do like that. So just imagine like the whole movie. <laughs> you know? Mm. Like you have a group of characters, like the losers. Mm. Maybe they're just adults this time. Like teenagers. People trying to find their own. Mm. And they're trying to build their own thing. They're trying to be successful in a greedy capitalistic world. Mm. And somebody new comes along and he props everybody up and they mm. kind of realize who it is when their friend dies and they realize, oh shit, we have somebody who's doing this on purpose. <sighs> and imagine the story through like their lives. They constantly have to be worried about the person trying to prompt them up. Yep. And how fucking terrified would that be? Mm. You know, like, hey, you did a good job today. Yeah. Whoa. What? <laughs> <laughs> like, or like a girl comes to you. I think you're really, really attractive. <sighs> <laughs> Just freeze. What? <laughs> that, that would be a very bleak existence. It would be a very bleak. And that's why, like, it's so like fear is terrifying. But once you understand, like, how 
because in the movie that's how this works. Spoilers for it. Yeah, apparently. yeah, 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 yeah. Like as soon as you figure out how it works, just like in real life, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if somebody lies to you all the time, or are they trying to put you down, and you realize they're like a narcissist, for example, mm-hmm. a narcissist comes up and they try to manipulate you they lie to you and try to fit you the purpose think of walter white i don't know if he's technically a narcissist but he does a lot of manipulation yeah as soon as you see through it their power is gone that's how it works right Mm -hmm. but think about the opposite a person that hypes you up right in many different ways and tries to like make you be successful so they can feed you Mm mm-hmm you know, it's very much like the witch in the woods. Right. We're going to feed you Hansel up as much. Gretel. Yeah, we're going to feed you up as much as possible so we can, when I eat you, it's going to taste delicious. Mm. I don't know. That was, that, I don't have like a whole story to it, but like just it's the concept. It's an interesting concept, yeah. I think it would be a little hard to execute. Um, how so? Just uh, like how do you – it's just such a like a long-form story. It could be. I mean, it could be short, told in a short amount of time. I, yeah, I almost, I almost, it's like such a long form story that I almost feel like it would be better off being told in a short format. If that makes any sense, because like there could be such long periods of not, I don't know. Yeah, it's it, you can't build like you need like a instant B-A-C hope. Plot. Yeah, you can't like build instant hope like you can. Fear. Well, that's that's the you thing. can't just like put them in a position where like oh. You have no choice but to you know yeah. to face it and not be hopeful. Well, like imagine like somebody who's successful in many fronts, mm. and you like, and that like you're successful in many fronts, right? And this thing happened in the past, but now you're successful in many fronts. You thought you beat this thing, just like in it, mm. but then it comes back. Or or maybe it's like, uh, you hit a point and you're you're like too afraid. Like it's like it, it's prompting you to a certain point. Like, you hit this level of success, now I'm coming for you. Yeah. But you don't know what that level is. Yeah. That I, that can make it more interesting. Like, well, then, you're like then you're struggling with, like, how do I continue to do things? Like, I want to keep living my life and doing better, but it, is this next opportunity, is this going to be the one that causes right. me to die? But also, like, like what, where is the entity coming from? Yeah. Where are they prompting me up? Think about a person, think about like you being successful on multiple fronts. You have, you're married, happy, married with kids. Mm. Your kids are successful. Your wife is successful or your husband or mm. whoever, whoever your partner is, they're successful. You go to your job. You're successful in your job. Um, you have a side project, also successful. Mm. And this entity enters your life. And you know, and you're aware of the entity in your life mm-hmm. you imagine that fear and like you don't and the, also the fear of you don't want to lose yeah exactly yeah, yeah, you yeah, don't yeah. want to not be happy it's all it's almost like you could uh instead of like a uh like it it type entity more like a, a gin in a sense maybe somebody that that like a magical type thing that can like bring luck but then there's the consequences that come in the end kind of thing yeah like a genie almost. yeah so not necessarily like like magically prompting them up or popping them up by like literally like great success and fortune and stuff like that. Like they'll yeah. just oh find a lottery ticket that's a winner kind of thing because of this. But oh yeah, it's it got it comes to an inevitable point. Well, once your luck hits its end, it comes to claim its bounty exactly, and you don't know when that luck is going to run out. That 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 is interesting when you yeah flesh it out a little bit more. That's yeah, it's idea. like a it's fucking terrifying, especially yeah. if, like if the main character is already successful. Yeah. And, like, you know the entities in your life. You're like, where does it come from? Mm. And you don't know who the entity is. Is it your kid? Yeah. Is it your wife? Is it your best friend in your side project that's going well, like your podcast? Is it your boss at your job mm. that you're successful in? Who is it? Yeah. So I, that's why I really love it because it's, it's, it's a fear and hope. It's a fear of happiness. It's like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know why. It's an I interesting like, concept. No, yeah. it is to... Because, I mean, like, if you're afraid to be happy, like, actually afraid to be happy, then that's that's no existence to live. No. Well, you might already have the ending. Yeah. <laughs> Lose everything and you're just like... Oh, yeah. Shrivel up into a ball of fear and you don't do anything because... That's, yeah, your only option. 
or, or you, you become like, like a, a Buddhist, like minimalist. Well, how many people, if they know that that entity is out there, would take that life over? Like, what do you mean? Like, would like for example, like um, we live in this society or, or economy now, where like a lot of people are feeling the ra- like they're feeling mm. the downside of capitalism. Mm. Like, if someone offered you the idea of, like, hey, you'll be super happy, super rich, super su- successful for five years, and then you die. It's literally making a deal with the devil, like a three quarter. How many people wouldn't crossroads do that? devil? Who wouldn't, who wouldn't, like, if they knew that an entity existed, who wouldn't take advantage of it and then try to, at the end, when their time is up, try to run away from it? Yeah. Would you do it? Would you make a deal with a demon at a crossroads? <sighs> Ten year deal? Whatever you Happiness want. Happiness works. That's a whole different movie, though. If you're like actually making the deal yeah. with the devil. Yeah, I know it is. But would you? Would I? Yeah. <sighs> Offered you everything you ever wanted, but in ten years, your soul's going to hell for the rest of eternity. No. No. Would you believe somebody if they said it to you? Well, the fuck no. <laughs> Yeah, no. But but what, isn't that how people would get tricked though? Right? Yeah. Like somebody comes up to you and is like, "Hey, you know, I'm the devil. I'm gonna make you this deal right now. I'll give you everything you ever wanted, but in ten years your soul is mine." You're like, "Oh yeah, yeah, sure." You know, shake their hand. You're like, "Yeah, yeah, whatever." Oh yeah, if like someone did that. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that's just uh, realistic. That's that would be your response. You know, sure, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I take that deal. Make me rich. Not expecting, you know, one hundred percent expecting, it. and then all of a sudden, oh, that was real. I am. Everything is going really well now, and now I have this deadline on my life. Yeah, interesting concepts. Mm-hmm. That's another movie. That's like a similar different, concept, yeah, different, slightly though. different. Yeah, this is more of an entity that feeds off of it, whereas this is a deal with the devil, which is a trope in many movies. But I feel like it's not. It 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 is in like a more nuanced way. Yeah, not so cut and dry. Okay. There's not really. I, I just think of supernatural because that's mm. they do that a lot. A lot of crossroad demons deals, but oh yeah, and then they try to figure out a way out. Yeah, of yeah, it yeah. And, then, and they never do. <laughs> spoilers. Yeah. Oh yeah, spoilers for supernatural. All right. Well, I think we should call for the wing it episode before it gets too long because we can go in two, three more hours if we wanted to. Probably. So all right, Brandon. Thank you for the wing it episode. Maybe we'll Happy do a beer. wing it second episode. I don't know. We'll see what happens here. I don't even know. Oh, it's one. Yeah, it's one o'clock. Let's, yeah, lunch time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks for everybody for listening. This was Star of All Me. I'm Jake Sherman. Brandon, Brandon. Klein. Yeah. We're out.